In this video, uh, I'm going to go over the world exam. This exam paper was given in fall 2019, test three. Um, so here is the first question. Assume that a seven centimeter diameter 90 watt light bulb radiates all its energy as a single wavelength of visible light. Estimate the electric field strength and magnetic field strength at the surface of the bulb. So basically what he gave us, he gave us the P and he gave us the diameter so we can find the area, surface area. So this is nothing but the pointing vector. Probably you're, if you're following textbook, textbook is using I, but I recommend you to go with the S. I, we already using it for current. Okay, so a light bulb, most probably it's around one. So I'm going to take the surface area of the light bulb is four pi r square. That's the surface area of the light bulb. So let me write down those values. So P equal to 90, area equal to four pi r square. Here he gave us the seven centimeters of diameter. So I converted into radius d over two. So I end up with uh, S pointing vector equal to 5,882.35 um, watt per meter square. Power is in watts, area is in meter square. Okay, so that's that's S value. Now he's asking about find electric field strength and magnetic field strength. So if you look into the equation sheet, um, by the way, this is the old one. I modified this equation sheet and posted it again. Um, here is the pointing vector. I can use this formula. So that S equal to E square C times epsilon naught where C is speed of light, which is three times 10 to the power of eight meter per second. Um, here it is, that value. Actually, I moved it to somewhere else when you are looking into your equation sheet. Okay, so E square, which, which we don't know. C I know, epsilon naught I know. So S equal to 5882.35 divided by three times 10 to the power of eight times 8.85 times 10 to the power of negative 12. So 5882.35 over C times epsilon naught, I end up with 2.21 times 10 to the power of 6 volt per meter. Now you can use the same, I mean, the given formula right there, or else there is another formula C equal to E over B. So I can find B equal to E over C, or you can use B naught equal to naught over C naught. So 2.21 times 10 to the power of 6 over 3 times 10 to the power of 8. That value is, I have that value as 7.36 milli Tesla. B is measured in Tesla. Okay, that's what he's asking for B and E. I found E right there. Actually, this is not S, so let me make this equal to S. Okay, so I found E and B. The next one, a converging lens with a focal length of 40 centimeters and diverging lens with a focal length of 32 centimeters. Usually, I usually give this as a negative, um, but I clearly mentioned that a diverging lens. So uh, even though if it is not negative, still you, you can take where uh, it belongs to, either behind the lens or in front of the lens. So, okay. so he's clearly mentioning that they are placed 120, 152 centimeters apart. A 3.6 centimeter tall object is 60 centimeter in front of the converging lens. Calculate the distance between the image and diverging lens and height of the image. Okay. So first here is the axis. I always take object on the left hand side. So let me take this object is right here, which is 3.6 centimeter tall. Okay. So this object is 60 centimeter in front of a converging lens. So first I have a converging lens. Okay. And then diverging lens. Okay. Now I know the distance between these two is 152 centimeter. 
and the converging lens has a focal length of 40 centimeters so let me I always take the first one as one second one as two so f1 uh, and the second one has focal length of f2 so this value is 40 this value is 32 that's what that negative indicates when I put the negative um, it is in front of the in front of the lens now I'm going to use the lens equation 1 over distance of image plus 1 over distance of object equal to 1 over f1 I'm going to put everything 1 because it is the first object by the way the distance here is given as 60 centimeters okay so 1 over distance of image 1 so I'm talking about lens 1 di1 equal to 1 over 40 minus 1 over d01 which is 60 so 3 by 120 minus 2 by 120 I would say 1 over 120 so distance of image 1 equal to I end up with a positive number 120 so here the magnification factor m1 so I have a positive number and magnification factor m1 equal to minus distance of image 1 uh, over distance of object 1 which is negative 120 over 60 negative 2 that's m1 value so it is in, uh, negative so it is inverted and 120 is exactly 120 is right here exactly on f2 basically okay and it is inverted now for lens 2 for lens 2 uh, image of object 1 equal to um, image of object 1 equal to sorry it is image of lens 1 not object 1 image of lens 1 equal to object of lens 2 okay so now what is the distance here distance of image 1 2 plus distance of object 2 equal to minus 1 over f2 so what is distance of object 2 distance of object 2 equal to 152 minus 120 because this value is 120 so that must be 32 centimeters so 1 over distance of image 2 equal to minus 1 over 32 minus 1 over 32 minus 2 over 32 equal to minus 1 over 16 so distance of image 2 equal to negative 16 so now magnification factor m2 equal to minus of minus 16 over so distance of image over distance of object which is 32 so minus minus get cancel out you will end up with 0 0.5 negative uh, positive 0.5 so when you see positive that means it is not inverted so it's going to be in the same side okay and then this value is 16 centimeters okay total magnification factor m equal to m1 times m2 I end up with minus 2 times 0 0.5 negative 1 okay whenever you see the negative number as I mentioned see if the final image is inverted okay um, let me move on to the next uh, next question A woman is I did this example in another video um, it's a similar example I didn't make me make any changes so I'm not going to explain but I'm going to write down the solution F for easy calculations I'm going to change this to 10 10 centimeters it's not going to make any difference so in, in, in this example, example 3, I'm going to use the law of reflection, theta i equal to theta r. So based on that, the light ray which is coming from the 
from the toe, it has to reach the eye. So if you look at this triangle, okay, here is the triangle. Now in the triangle, I'm saying theta i equal to theta r. So if that's the case, theta i equal to theta r, these distances must be same. X must be same on both sides. What is that X value? X value is 1.8 over 2, which is uh, 1.8 over 2, which is 0.9. Okay. Now here, um, I'm using the X there, so don't get confused. Let me change this as some Y, distance Y. Okay. And now here, I'm using that as X. That X also, here he clearly mentioned, assume her eyes is, eyes are 10 centimeter below. So this X value must be five centimeter. That's how I found X value. So H plus X plus D must be 1.8 centimeter or 1.8 meter. Um, so H must be 1.8 minus 0.9 minus 0 0.05 because that's in centimeters. So it must be 0.85 meter. Okay, so um, that's the easy one, easy one. Now, the next example, a 1.5 centimeter high object is placed 20 centimeter in front of concave mirror. Okay, for the mirrors, concave mirror focal length or focal point is in front of the mirror. Okay, so one over D naught plus one over D equal to one over F. So one over D equal to one over 15 because radius of curvature is given, which is 30 centimeters from there, I found the focal length, which is R over to 15 centimeters. So 15, one over 15 minus one over 20, I end up with distance of image is 60 centimeters. So M magnification factor is minus T I by D naught minus 60 over 20, which is minus three times. So height of the image must be three times 1.5, which is 4.5 centimeters. So the image is inverted. Image is inverted. Is it real image or virtual image? So here the object is just 20 centimeter away, but object is look like it is 60 centimeter away and it is inverted. So it is not, it's not a real image. So image is inverted and it is virtual image. Now going to the next example. So here he's asking about total impedance and total current supplied by the source. Probably easy example. Now um, the given circuit is in time domain. We need to convert that into uh, frequency domain. So when I convert this into frequency domain, this value is 20 over square root two and omega value is given omega equal to that value is 20 over square root 2 omega equal to 2 so this is j2 omega this is um minus j2 isn't it 0.5 henry is minus oh that's also henry so it's just plus j1 i thought that's capacitor so this one is 0.1, so one over, so minus J5, because JXC equal to one over omega C. So one over 0.1 is 10, 10 over two, which is five minus J. Okay, everything looks good to me. Now this circuit is in, now this circuit is in uh, frequency domain.
So I found from the Snell's law theta 2 equal to 22.48 degrees. Now I know theta value, theta 2 value. Now we'll find other angles here. So if I know theta 2, can you guys tell me what is that angle? That angle, let me take that angle as B. So can I take B equal to 90 minus 22.48? That value equal to 67.52. Now, since I know B, can we find this angle D right there? Okay, so D must be uh, 60 plus B plus D must be 180 degrees. So D must be 180 minus 60, which is 120, 120 minus 67. I have D value as 52.48 degrees. Once I know D, once I know D, can I find I, I equal to, because this angle must be 90 degrees, isn't it? This angle must be 90 degrees, so that must be 92. So D plus I must be equal to 90, I equal to 90 minus 52.48. I found that as 37.42 again I'm going to use Snell's law so n2 sine theta 2 equal to n3 sine theta 3 which is x theta 3 I'm taking that as x n2 is 1.5 sine 37.42 equal to sine theta 3 now theta 3 equal to let me calculate that. I found theta 3 equal to 65.64 degrees. Now here is the last example in this in this chapter. I think I need to move this screen. So in this example radiation from the sun reaches to the earth at the rate of uh, rate about 1350 watt per meter square. I believe I clearly mentioned this. Um, this is the pointing vector s value is given 1350 so radiation from the sunlight it when it reaches to the earth when it reaches to the earth uh, it, it is around 1000 watt per meter square but outer atmosphere it is 13 uh, 1000, 1000 watt per meter square maybe because of the lockdown current current situation lots of pollution got reduced because many factories are not working blah 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 probably we might receive 1200 watt per meter square Okay. but um, whatever number I gave you I'm going to use that s value so so he's talking about find the maximum value of e and b it's a direct substitution we have formulas for both here he's asking about maximum values so I can use s equal to half epsilon naught c times E naught square okay or I can use um, I mean I cannot use this but once I find E naught I can use this to find E naught B naught over 2 mu naught or I can use half C over mu naught B naught square so I'm going to use the first one to find E so E equal to 2 times 1350 divided by epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the power of negative 12 and c value is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 square root of okay e equal to okay i found that value as 1008.4 volt per meter okay. now i know that c equal to E over B so based on this or uh, I can re I mean I can find B value by using this formula or I can find by using this formula too so this is E naught basically E naught is the maximum value so B naught equal to E naught over C which is 1008 over 3 times 10 to the power of 8 that value is let me use the calculator. 
I have 3.36 micro Tesla that is B0 okay that's it this is um, which exam I believe this is the fall 2019 I'm going to post this video most probably on the blackboard um, if if it cannot fit I'll push on the YouTube but I'll share the link thank you